So one of the biggest learnings is, has been that uh, hiring is very difficult. I think uh, it's, it's something that everyone faces, not only us. And it, it doesn't only sort of, uh, it's not only limited to designers, but it's also uh, product engineers and so on and so forth. And uh, what we realized is hiring guys, you know, a couple of guys who witnessed a lot of the West Coast culture. One, two guys can help you really build a great team. And uh, once you have those guys in your team, then hiring becomes a lot easier because you have referrals and, and so on and so forth. But um, there's no doubt we can tell that the ecosystem is very early. If it wasn't, then uh, we would not be having this problem in hiring. I think uh, it's going to change based on a couple of big successes, and I hope that happens sooner than later. And we're hoping that you know, at least one BSU company contributes towards that big push in the ecosystem in the next couple of years. I think most of what you've seen is hike because we've gotten some phenomenal traction. Okay. Uh, so we, we're building Hopper, which is more of a uh, location-based recommendations come loyalty sort of service. <clears throat> we announced our gaming studio, Tiny Mogo Games, that's in Bangalore. Uh, it's a 40-man team building some very interesting games for mobile sort of uh, platforms. We launched a game called um, uh, Shiva, the time, uh, the time Bender. It's come out very nice and the feedback has been phenomenal. Okay. Um, it's, doing, you know, it's actually doing very well, not only in India, but in countries abroad too, which is very surprising because we haven't done any marketing there. Uh, we also have another game called Song Quest, which is far more Indian, which is based on, you know, it's a combination of like Bollywood and KBC. It's like music trivia. And again, the response has been phenomenal so far. So you'll see, an, uh, uh, you'll see a lot more noise made by us in the next couple of months on pushing these games out in the market in a big, big way. I think we don't, um, as a startup, you have to be very prudent with how you spend your money. And given that we fund these startups year on year, we have very smart ways of acquiring users. So uh, we're not against TV, but it's very, very expensive. And the sort of CPA, the cost per acquisition per user is very high. Uh, if you look at Hike, for example, when you acquire a user, the single user utility in Hike is very low, which means that when you join the application, if you don't have friends, you churn off very fast. So instead of spending a lot of money on TV, can you invest you know, a similar amount inside a smarter way to acquire customers? And we did that with Hike back in Feb, where we went from 100,000 users to about 5 million in a month and a half by building a very smart referral scheme. And that uh, helped us kickstart our growth and also point out a lot of problems in our infrastructure. And our service came you know, collapsing down back then, maybe, you know, issues that we sort of fixed and, and gone past. But it is tough to acquire users in India, there's no doubt about that. Sure. I think because the market is not overly large, the real estate available to go acquire users is very, very small. Even, uh, when I say that, I mean you know, Facebook, Twitter, ad networks and so on and so forth, very, very small. And um, the prices to acquire the users are very, very high and the return is very low. For example, let's say I acquire a user for about two and a half, three dollars it's questionable whether I can make the money back in a year or two years. So from that perspective, um, one has to be very careful how to sort of build that sort of, you know, customer acquisition funnel. We're at a point where uh, we thought the market would be far further along than it was. And if you look at the Android user base, I think there are about 40 to 50 million Android devices in the market. But the number of active Android devices accessing the internet on a 30-day basis is about 15 million, maybe 20 million tops. And when you're at number one in the Android store, you're getting about an average of 60,000 downloads a day. It's a very small market. So I think uh, it's not as large as we would like it to be, but, because, but I, I believe fundamentally that a lot of the guys who are aspiring towards content and applications are still sitting on these older devices. S40 devices, the Archer series and so on and so forth. And when the shift happens to smartphone, I think that's where you're going to see a lot more uh, pervasive sort of usage of the internet. I also fundamentally believe that, and something this is we're experimenting with the, at BSP, is how do you build a different business model? Now, one of the things in India we noticed is that there's this whole very large side loading market where people have these SD cards that are pirate content, video songs that people buy for about 60, 70 rupees in the market. And that market is very, very large. Now, the demand for content as a result, we can tell is there. The problem is when you put this barrier of data in the middle, uh, you're sort of blocking of consumers getting access to the content. They have no problem paying for it. But I think um, in the same way, telcos don't sell you a time slot for a call or you know, TPS for SMS, and they sell you one minute and one SMS. Um, for the broader market, selling one MB, one GB is not the best way to go. And in our portal vertical uh, that we sort of power at live, 
uh, what we built uh, for Atel was uh, a one rupee store where data is absolutely free, which means that when you access that website, there is no data charge. But for every uh, content piece you download, you charge one rupee. And it's been a very big hit. And we put, I mean, Atlas put a lot of marketing money behind it, but the whole idea is that that business model works. Because when you remove, when you have a healthy network, uh, when uh, you remove all the barriers to, you know, entry and acquire content and access content, there's a very large demand. So can you apply that across all our verticals? And that's something that's the, you know, that's a very complicated piece to tackle because that, that effectively means verticalizing a telecom guy, a device guy, an internet guy. Something that, not, that, that cannot be done overnight. And that's something we're working towards on a longer term basis, on a sort of two, three year, five year basis, uh, so we can drive more distribution for our applications and grow the market as well. So that's a very complicated problem in India. I think um, you'll, you'll always have India broken into three parts, the, the top, the middle, and the bottom. For the bottom, yes, no doubt about that. For the top, top, middle, the app strategy will work. Um, you know, people will come on our data plans. But for the middle and below, you'll have to think about very smart sort of um, uh, access and distribution strategies. Sure. I think uh, people who figure those out will have a, I think, have a big leg up in the market in the next couple of years. Uh, we're seeing, you know, smartphones being sold. We're seeing appetite growing year on year. The smartphone market is growing at about, I think, 90% a year, which is fen phenomenal. We've become the third largest smartphone market globally. So the numbers are huge. The question is, who can go and extract these numbers, yeah. right? Not even monetize. Yeah. How do you get half a billion people using your service? Half a billion people in the country, right? That's a tricky question. Uh, and I think that's why it's very important to build simple applications that can, you know, be used by the majority of the country. And... Um, so there are pros and cons. If you look at, for example, Samsung and Micromax's growth, it's been phenomenal in the last couple of years. If you look at Facebook's growth in the last year, it was, I think, 30% year-on-year growth in acquisitions and subscribers. Uh, this year, it was 2%. What is up with that? Why is that the case? Because I think they've hit a wall. Mm. And beyond that 70, 80 million sort of population that, of you know, internet users, is there really a market right now? In my opinion, there's not a market. It's cultivating slowly. So how do you build a service and how do you sort of give consumers access to the service very easily without too much confusion? And that's something we're working on and hopefully we'll crack in the next six months to a year. Mm -hmm.